Hello and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. It's been a while. Yes, we've all come back from our respected vacation. Me from Australia and Sappy and Silver from BronyCon. Yes, and talking about those two, joining us is Silver Quill. Sup, my biznatches? Let me hear you say sweep, 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 sweep. I'm too white to carry this rhythm. <laughs> Yo, what up, y'all? For shizzle. How was the BronyCons? Oh, the BronyCons was wonderful. It was a chance to meet all these great people. I got to host several panels. We turned one panel into the roast of Josh Scorcher. <laughs> it really was. Oh, God. <laughs> you could have got... used that one last joke, but you didn't. I could have, but I didn't. There wasn't the opportunity. <laughs> I'm keeping it reserved for the next time I see him where he will want to kill me. <laughs> uh... And I got to meet Seffi in person. My spine is still recovering from the flying glomp. <laughs> you told me when you signed the autograph. <laughs> Uh, wish I could join. And Sappy, she's here, she, she's here too. Yay! So what's up? I'm going to sweep, sweep, sweep Silver's brain out, but hi! BronyCon was amazing! I got to meet people in person and I was way too happy and excited to be cynical and crap. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, so this whole cynical and crap thing is uh, just an act? No. <laughs> I mean, I was too happy to, like, meet everybody and see everybody be my usual cynical, you know. <laughs> I wish I could be there, too. I wish I could be there. Like, getting to hang out with you guys would have been awesome. But no, I had to go to Australia. I had to face the cool winter weather down there. Ugh. But now you're back in warmer climates, right? Yep, it's normal for me. Ah. <laughs> uh. But anyway, besides the whole BronyCon and Estrella story, I'm sure you guys put up some BronyCon stories, right? Um, well, I, I wrote up some journals and whatnot. I still I have sh- to write for uh, Saturday and Sunday. I am counting on the recordings of various panels to uh, be my, my testimony, and I've also posted some fans who were providing artwork. Ah, awesome, awesome. We'll, we'll see how that goes. And as for me, listen to episode 221 of the MBS show where I blather on about the experience in Australia. And one thing I need to mention again is that you guys have this GameStop, game sh- what is it, GameStop or Game Shop, or what do you call them? GameStop or Ripoff Place. <laughs> yeah, you, you have yeah. those place and also you have like those Targets, EBs, whatever you call them. I like the stores. I, I like going them. I like going in them, but I don't go for the games. I, I just look at the pop culture toys and stuff. You know, those things that you don't really need but want. Oh, then go hot topic. A hot, hot topic is okay, but I, I don't know. Um, when I was in Australia, I liked the EB games. They had pretty good selection there. But that's besides the point. Uh, as for today, we are going to cover the Saddle Row review. We're going to review it. Uh, so this is Season 6, Episode 9, Overall Episode Number 126, Original Air Date, May 21st, 2016, Written by Nick Conflone. And yeah, this is a rather interesting episode. <laughs> yep. Interesting, That that's what people use when they're scared. I would say that it's just like, how to put this, um, synopsis is, Rarity's finally opening the shop in Manhattan, and she has little time to set it all up, and ask her friends to help her, well, set the shop up. Hijinks ensue, and we'll see how that goes. Well, technically it's done, There's, it's kind of a past 10 present, I, I don't know how they tell the story. What format is that, by the way? Non-linear, basically. We're jumping through time. Mm. It's it's all one big flashback, but then they're flashing back to things that they didn't really, that couldn't be in the article itself. So, this was an interesting episode. So, I think first impressions are in, are in order. And I think we'll go for Silver. Oh, we're going in that order. Yep, ah. yep again. Well, let's see here. What This one was a lot of fun. Very enjoyable romp because of the nonlinear storytelling. Basically, 
you you jump back and you have the characters recounting things one way with the perspective of hindsight, but then uh, but then you get to see how they behave in the moment, which may conflict, which is a very realistic character trait. We don't always remember things with 100% accuracy. Sometimes our egos doctor it up so that we can appear cooler or more in control or less uncertain, i.e., sweet, sweet, sweet. <laughs> The only thing that I'm kind of boggling at is, one, the end result is h- how much of a budget loss is this for rarity? And two, we just got Cantalot Boutique last season, and now we're already expanding into New York. Pace yourself, rarity. You don't know how many more seasons of Pony is left. You may need to draw oh, this out okay. a little. Uh, Seppi. Well, I'm going to save this at first. While I do enjoy the episode now, I didn't enjoy it when I first saw it because of personal reasons. I don't remember why. But I do enjoy this episode for the fact that, you know, the weird storytelling. That was the first thing that I noticed when I saw it before something around the house or whatever just spoiled the mood for me. I really, like, find the style... Of, like, the storytelling (laughs) to be really fun and really fresh. I think that Nick Confalone has done a really great job this season compared to last season when, um, he had to make the yaks. Yaks. They ain't easy, then. I think Silver is triggered. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the yaks. I still kind of wish that Spike was there, in a sense. Maybe that would be adding a bit too much into the mix. But I guess that's what uh, Coco Camel is for, because she's also played by Kathy Weslock. Although, Honestly, uh, I think she could have been taken out of the story, too, and it wouldn't have affected much. Well, Safi, do you want to get a sued? It's now Miss Pamel. Also, okay. destruction... Destruction upon the X. <laughs> I think Silver is going hunting. Indeed. Western style. <sighs> let me put the. Let me get the Yax uh, stuffed and put them on your wall. That, that that would be sick. That's like a serial killer <laughs> mounting his, his trophies on a wall. I. Really, Safi, I, I thought better of you than that. You should see the stuff that my dad puts on his wall then, okay. <laughs> uh, and as for me, uh, I like this episode. like it the first time I saw it, and like it the second time I saw it too. The storytelling methods for this episode is interesting. I do like the whole flashback within a flashback, and the whole... Especially this is done a lot with Rainbow Dash about how she tries to act cool and whatnot, but <laughs> totally not. Uh, that that seems to work. And the problem that they are faced here is, well, rather interesting. And I would say that they have the right tools for the job. So that's my thoughts for now for first impressions. It's hard for me to gather up words. But uh, let's see. I think we should do this one in teams instead of scenes. Agreed? I'm for yep. it. Alrighty then. So... When it comes to this episode, it's all over the place. It jumbles up into a lot of things that we can mention. If we go scene by scene, there's, well, it's kind of a linear reviewing method. And we can, well, just go through the motions and probably we'll miss a few. So I'm just going to categorize them in terms of problems. In terms of what do the main six here have in terms of their problems. And first up, we have Rarity here who's opening a store in Manhattan and the shop's not ready. So we're introduced to aspects of the shop that, well, need work and her friends are able to do it. So first thing, we're introduced to how messy the place is so everyone could clean up shop. And we're introduced to the shopkeeper who sounds like a Russian mobster. Well, he certainly behaves like one. Also, Fluttershy for best dust bunny. Yay! So cute. <laughs> I just want to bring up that we did have some lead into this from the future. Ah, yes. As to get our interest, all the ponies are uh, 
are rushing to intercept rarities reading the article, only to be blocked by no spoilers. <laughs> oh, that has to be the most awesomest moment ever. Yep, it really was. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And the, and thus a meme was born across the internet. Every website now has a no spoilers hashtag. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder, like, do the show runners do this because they know it will be a meme or that they think that it's just funny? They I think, think they go, it's just funny. Yeah, just funny and then they hope that it'll be meme-tastic. <laughs> I don't, th- I don't think anyone saw Twilight King becoming a meme. Yeah, like, that was just too random. I actually didn't think that the um Chewy Chewy Sweep thing would become a meme, to be honest. It didn't really, but it did turn out well, some awesome became, remix. Yeah, it became a victim to a lot of people just randomly going <laughs> sweep, sweep, sweep. Oh god, this is really going to sweep. It. You're saying it became a clean sweep? <laughs> no. I got the reference. Yeah, I don't get Kid. Kids. Well, you- Oh, you kids today. We got you, we at least got you to see what, Back to the Future recently? Yep, yep. Back to the oh. Future, He-Man, uh, that's all I can think of. We should add more, we should add more. Okay, now watch the real Ghostbusters cartoon. Oh god! I don't wanna watch it, I hear it's terrible. What, the real Ghostbusters? It was awesome! No, I'm talking about the cartoon. Yes, that's, well, okay, there are two Ghostbusters. There's Ghost film Funimation's Ghostbusters, which was fun, and the real Ghostbusters, which was a little, which was pretty bold of them to say, but it was also really good. Yeah, um, I don't know, I don't know who you talking to, but they're crazy. You talking to crazy people? I don't approve of you talking to the crazies, uh-huh. except me. <laughs> uh, Somebody help me. <laughs> uh, you, you, you're in with us. It's always anyway, Fluttershy, Best Dust Bunny, Rarity. Mick tries to set up a store the day of opening. What is with ponies and their odd sense of timing? We have a royal wedding. Let's start preparation the day of. Oh, dang. We, we have to start the crystal fair. Oh, we only need 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> timing in a question is just nuts. But anyway, um, we, setting up the problem here is just that first, Rarity has an overbearing shop owner and once his daughter to work at a shop. And said daughter has big ambition ideas. And bigger braces. Yes, indeed. And besides that, we have... Brace a... face pony. Yes. And besides that, we have broken problems with raccoons and not the rocket type. Adding to that, mm. we have DJ Pwn3 setting up residence above the store. What? And you've got ponies dancing in leg warmers. The 80s is nice and alive in this place. Yes. Actually, a funny thing. You know that one pony with, like, the long red hair? Who has a pacifier hanging around her neck. Yeah, there's actually a character from this anime online called uh, Ruby that looks very similar to her. Wait, wait, Ruby with a W? Yeah, Ruby with a W. Her name is Neon Cat. Let me get you a picture real quick. That'd be funny. Although I don't know it if we really can call... It really does look a lot like her. Like, that was the first thing I thought of when I saw this character. That's the character Neon Cat, and then look at that particular pony. Huh. Although, here, can we really call Ruby an anime when it's made by Texans? <laughs> Indeed. Screw you. What? It's I, anime I, inspired. How about that? The Legend of Korra like, was anime inspired too. I like yeah. Ruby. I'm just saying that you know we gotta be strict with our terms. Mm-hmm. I never thought you'd like Ruby of all people. Why would? Huh, what do you mean, you people? <laughs> oh. Hey. Why did you not? Oh, okay. We can we can have this discussion offline. But I want to know why people think I wouldn't like Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> later, later, later. But, well, I find it unexpected, but oh well. It's an anti-silver conspiracy. <laughs> Silver and rubies are, qu- are a quite complementary color set. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'm just going to go through all of Rarity's problems first. So we have clothes shipping that are not categorized and arranged properly. We got Coco Pomel who's not able to come in to work because of a flu she has. And... 
all this compiles into one big problem for Rarity that she's having a big headache and oh wow, what she's going to do. So with that, let's break it down. Uh, who do we want to tackle first? Uh. Well, most people usually want to tackle me first, but that involves a vicious beating uh, soon thereafter. True. True, not true. Not what we mean, Silver. Not this time, anyway. Not Oh, not this time, this time. Well, all right. So, I think the first pony we should tackle is Pinkie Pie, who acknowledges, yeah, we. Are, it's easy to want uh, extra copies of yourself to get things done, but then you end up locked in a room with 50 Pinkie Pies <laughs> watching paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> And then, oh, looks like you missed a spot. <laughs> I this scene here, I I I was very happy with this scene. It got me giggling, and oh my god, knowing that there's a clone of Pinkie Pie out there, <laughs> yeah, much fun. Oh yay! Now you have to think, who's the original one? Is it this one or the other? Hmm, I don't know. Or is that a changeling? Oh, either way, we're all doomed. Yeah, yes. Well, maybe it's the changeling she beat up uh, in Cantalot when he's like, I liked being you. You were fun. <laughs> so I'll be you then. But yeah, we'll tackle with Pinkie Pie then. So Pinkie Pie has the job of trying to uh, turn down the music because DJ Pwn3, or uh, vinyl here, is having a club party in the middle of the day and yeah, it ain't good. And so she has angel and devil rarities, which have inspired any number of fan art, mm -hmm. telling her, what would rarity do? Oh, the ultimate question of the episode. WWRD. <laughs> What's that? What would what rarity, would rarity do? do? If you're ever in doubt, children, just ask yourselves. WWRD. What would rarity do? Oh god, no. But I do like the banter between <laughs> the angel, uh, rarity and devil rarity. Like, oh, like, I just like Tabitha since you're main acting here. She's, she's just awesome in this. And I don't know, I kind of like the new track that Pinkie Pie, uh, got vi vinyl to play. It's so easygoing, so mellow, and I believe Pinkie Pie is moonwalking? Like a hippie, man. Pinkie, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Pinky? I think she's trying <laughs> to have fun with that, but no. He ain't oh, working. God. He ain't working. So, yeah. So, this is kind of the situation of what would Rarity do? WWRD. Yes, indeed. So, let's go for... Well, you mentioned her, so we may as well go for Rainbow Dash. Mm -hmm. Yes, she's <laughs> up next with a trio of... Oh my goodness, you know, I didn't realize this when I first watched the episode, but I'm looking at screenshots now. Mm -hmm. One of, one of the three designers has the same cheekbone structure as Zesty Gourmand. Uh -huh. from oh god. And I have to wonder, how do you get those cheekbones? Is there, is there like a metal polisher involved, <laughs> or maybe some welding? I don't think so. Ponies have I, been getting way too realistic lately. Ugh. I, I, I haven't seen cheekbones that rigid since Shining Armor's jaw in Equestrian yeah, Girls. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, no. Not that. But still, the problem for Rainbow Dash to solve is that, well, Coco Pomel's sick, and there's nobody able to take care of the store. And it's up to Rainbow Dash to find the best of the best for every store, and that is workers. And <laughs> this is the most terrible option for Rainbow Dash to do. She got no experience in clothing. And what would Rarity do? Ask them about clothing questions. Yay! Much fun, right? Not for them, it, I bet. Not, well, for them, it's another day on the job. Uh, for Rainbow, you know, she's streaking 90% of the time. Oh, God. Come on, moving super high and not wearing a single article of clothing. Eh? Eh? Uh, oh, God, no. Your dirty kind does not affect me, old man. <laughs> yeah, but my sound effects will. <laughs> oy. Oy, oy, oy. Sorry, I'm not Golden Fox. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so after RD, we'll go for AJ. And her problem is to solve the really ambitious and over... No, I wouldn't say overbearing. Um, really ambitious character here. Whose her name is? Oh, wow. 
Uh, all I know her is as the storefront's daughter, which honestly, Applejack should be getting the lawsuit ready. Ah, I mean, the, the guy threatened to increase her rent if he, she didn't offer him special privileges, i.e. taking, uh, paying heed to his daughter. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Uh, her name is Plat Stripes. Oh yeah, I, her. I will take your word for it. I'm just on the wiki right now and just seeing her name is. Well, she does wear a lot of plaid stripes. And her, her cutie mark is a plaid heart. So yeah, we got plaid stripes. So now AJ here needs to deal with this. And how does she go about it? What would Rarity do? Outright no. <laughs> She caves to, well, in time she'll cave, but she's making a Philly cry. Yeah. Ah. Oh, AJ. All right. All right, I don't think she wanted to do it, but you know, what would Rarity do? She's a teacher. Which is actually it, not what Rarity would do, but okay. I don't know. Rarity can be cold blooded <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. But still, I, I, I do like oh. how AJ kind of, um, justify or, supports the idea of well spoon clothing that's ingenious and useful <laughs> AJ likes the idea but Rarity don't so there's one problem that they need to deal with next up is Twilight and Twilight's in her own element there's nothing to say here like arranging clothes by category color and style that's her thing there's nothing more we can say here you know, that's actually something I'm a little sad about. It seems like Twilight has lost a little bit of her zeal. I mean, okay, they're, they're touching on the the adorable nature or the the super organized pony, but it's really hard just to get Twilight to be quirky anymore. We'll have to wait and see in the future if they do ten, do if they do want to do more with that. And next up is Fluttershy. Fluttershy has the job of. Evicting rotents. Getting rid of the animals. Yes. I'm not getting paid to see what I tried. It's just too sad. <laughs> yeah. And in the end, uh, their method of problem solving didn't help. Everything's kind of going wrong. Unless you're Twilight. In that case, everything's perfecto. Even she's buried. And in this situation right now, everybody's arguing for, well, job position, show, store rental, and it, a place to live and whatnot. And yeah, it seems that the main five here were looking at things the wrong way. And they should have done what they do best, which is, well, we'll break it down in how they solve their problems. For Fluttershy, she talks to the animals saying that, oh, they can stay here, but you need to take a shower. You smell like trash. Well, yeah, they, they've been living in trash. Oh, but they take exception to that. <laughs> Indeed. And with Pinky, encompassing both worlds, fashion and music, it works. So that's her idea. Rainbow Dash is, hey, race to the store. Finish, you get the job. Did she say first or finish? I think it's whoever's there first. But then the, well, whoever all... gets the job plus a uh, raise. Oh, and let's let's touch on that, okay? As we see all these changes taking place and all of it starts to come together, Rarity's budget just got put through a shredder. <laughs> I mean, the real world practicalities, okay, kind of hard to apply real world practicality to a cartoon horse world. But there's this little thing called money. You don't have as much about it, and it's not a foreign concept. We do know that Equestria runs on bits. So it does exist. Well, I, my guess is Rarity just finds secret stashes of gems and take and just ends the equestrian economy with, in one fell swoop. <laughs> Probably. Eh, maybe you never know. And Applejack's solution is to cave in to Mister Stripe, Big Daddy Russian wannabe pony. So yeah, they solve the problem, and well, their solution is pretty ingenious. And while. This is happening. Rarity is stuck in the window display. Well, it could be worse when it comes to window display. Actually, I'm just uh, I'm just envisioning ponies passing by and Rarity pressed against the glass. Help! I'm trapped in the glass booth of emotion. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. I think we have run through problems and answers. So, what do we do next? Because I'm not really good at the whole team thing. 
Well, let's see here. We've, we've still got Twilight's pride. I, I said it's hard to have her find quirks, but that self-satisfaction when she cross-referenced and triple-organized Rarity's booth, it is fun to just to see her taking that kind of pride. And then we see the actual fruits of the labor with all the shop nuances. Rainbow hired all the fashion designers because they are all slow. <laughs> But knowledgeable at their job. The raccoons are, are now serving staff and yeah, good luck with the health and safety inspector on that one. <laughs> Indeed. It may as well be a ratatouille story. I think they're all good if they get their shots. And then what probably the most interesting thing, and this is going to set off against a later episode, is one pony declares this the most, what did he call it? The most quirky or the most, uh, he basically praised the fact that it was atypical, that it was unexpected. Let's see here. Just looking up the transcript as we, as I ramble. Because we're about to have an episode where being different and quirky is suddenly bad. So basically, we're saying New York is far... Sorry, Manhattan is much more uh, open-minded than Canterlot. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that's the thing. And looking at how certain places act and... Uh, interact with each other, it does say a lot because Cantalot has that hoity-toity feel to it where everything has to be proper and classy while Manhattan is your regular place where everybody is different in their own way and with how those characters interact with each other, you can tell that it's not your typical Cantalot style of ponies. Let's see here. I finally found the quote. Uh, an unnamed Earth Stallion. This is the most whimsical and wonderfully fashionable boutique I've ever seen. Oh! Uh. Wow. I, I added that myself. <laughs> Although there's, you know, there's also one question. This might be tribist of me, but I want to see the crowd that's gathered for this year boutique. Because Cantalot is all unicorns, and unicorns have a reputation for snobbery. 90% of the ponies, excluding our heroines, actually, gosh, 99% of all ponies in that shot are Earth ponies. There are no Pegasi, who never struck me as very fashion uh, savvy, but also the only unicorns are one of one of the clothes dealers and DJ Pone 3. Everyone else is an Earth pony who are more, well... If I had to generalize, I think Earth Pony is just more open to new things. And grounded. And grounded. Although that one dude is, he's trying to be a very silly Wolverine right now. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, still. I mean, if Wolverine had giant spoons coming out of his hands, well, that might actually, that might actually hurt more than the blades, but I, I don't think it would have been the same effect. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> hey, Bob. You know what this is? Sheik! Uh oh, spaghettios. <laughs> oh yeah, well yeah, I I do see that where Cantalot is more snobbish and is full of unicorns. Manhattan is full of Earth ponies and they're kind of cool and hip. And uh, let's see, Cloudsdale is full of well, obviously it's in the clouds, so Pegasi are going to be there. And I don't know what's their uh, mo traitors probably jerks. Pegasi, I'm sorry, Pegasi are jerks. Fluttershy is the exception to the norm. I'm, I'm being totally honest. Oh, doesn't love me anymore. Oh, Sapphire, you knew I antagonized you because I'm also a winged beast. <laughs> and, and, and definitely a jerk. Yep. But Sapphire. I Sefie, still love you, though. Sapphire, you are overcoming your winging off. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I love you. Uh, but anyway. It's like, don't hate me. <laughs> I, I could never hate you, Safi. You're too much fun to torment. <laughs> uh, but, Yay! but I, but I still got to find out why I'm not allowed to watch Ruby. I never said you weren't allowed. I just didn't expect you to be a fan. <laughs> Anywho. And so we close off on the most terrifying smile. I beat. I, I I understand. We go. We have all had braces at some point in our lives. We know how it looks, but Zutalor. But still, she she she's fun to see. She's fun, and we forgot to mention the reporter that's covering this. 
I think his name is apparently inspired by J. Jonah Jameson. <laughs> uh, I flipped when I first saw him. <laughs> so yeah, we got this character and he looks like J. Jonah. Much awesome, much, much wow. That's the whole story in a nutshell and I, I, I am not used to this kind of formatting of review. But still, Silver, what do you think, man? Like, anything else that we're missing? No, I think we've covered about the, the full, there is the, le- there is the rather important lesson. This is a companion piece to testing, testing one, two, three. When testing came out, it was, you have to customize the lesson to match the individual. Now suddenly it's, it's saying that when you have to face a task to help a friend, don't try to be that friend, be yourself and solve it in your own way. I can see that. And it's true because with the story here, she trusted her friends to solve the problem in their own special ways. That's why she, well, quote-unquote, selected the ponies for the job. And in the end, it did work when they stick to their roots. And they they created something fun and innovative and probably something that surpassed Rarity's original design. Indeed. And that's something that we can say that we face in real life before. And all in all, it makes for a fun episode, eh? Yes, yes, it does. Indeed. So anyway, if that's all with teams, I think we can wrap it up. Unless we're forgetting something. Oh, yeah. Well, just I'm just wondering how much Barry Lead had to pay for all those bills, especially Pinkie Pie's. Hopefully he got a discount. I still need photos of Spider-Ham <laughs> to sell the front page. Uh, no, no, it's Spider-Mare. Oh, come on, Sp- Spider-Pig, Spider-Pig does whatever does a Spider-Pig does. whatever pig. a Spider-Pig does. Can he swing from a web? No, he can't. He's a pig. Look out, he is the Spider-Pig. <laughs> All right, Eden. Yes, I know that song. Oh, God, I know that song. I think before we wrap it up, any memorable moments that you want to share for this episode, like scenes and whatnot? Well, the sweep, 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 definitely, especially Applejack and Rainbow Dash trying to prove they're too cool for school. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Classic 80s film. And the pinky clone is just a great visual gag. Yeah. Honestly, I did not notice that at first when I saw it, and then everybody was, like, pointing it out. It's like, what? Uh, it was really obvious, but still. And I do love how Fluttershy ordered nothing for herself, but the minute she brought in the, the raccoons for the interview, that's when there's actual food on the table. She is so generous. Aww. But treat yourself. The pony of generosity, but, ironically. But be, but be a little self-serving, my dear. Order yourself a sundae. Oh, tea. <laughs> She's being too kind to the point of starvation. But I do like uh, the visual effects in this episode. I, and I do like the scene where DJ was playing songs in the shop. That, that was pretty cool. So anyway, on to final thoughts. So, Silva. All in all, this is a fun episode. I mean, it still highlights one of the running themes of the show. That ponies are terrible planners and they always do things at the very, very, very last minute. This isn't even an 11th hour save. It's an 11 hours and 59 minutes save. But they really utilize the back and forth in time frame to make it stand out and to really add punch to the humor. Making it probably one of the funniest episode we've seen of season six thus far. Seppi, what about you? I think this episode could go down as like one of the best episodes from the show of all time, if you ask really, me. You know. Especially considering it's so late in the season. It's a really good episode. And it proves that there are still some ideas out there. Like, you know how the longer like shows seem to go, like the more ideas are being thrown out just for the sake of being thrown out? This episode was a really good idea. That had a really good story structure and was overall enjoyable, especially for a late season episode. I enjoyed it. A lot of other people enjoyed it. It became memeable. Sweep, sweep, sweep. Alrighty then. Um, as for me, I enjoyed this episode too. The visual gags did well. The comedic timing for certain characters were good. Uh, reference to previous episodes, especially like in season two, Too Many Pinkie Pies, that was a way of callback. That wasn't season two, that was season ah, three. Still, my bad. But still, that was like three years ago, and having it here, like no reason to, but still, it was funny. 
nevertheless. And just having new characters appear on screen and Rarity having her new shop open in Manhattan, eh, it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. I can't wait to see where they take this in the future. If they take it at all, I mean, the the one uncomfortable thing in all this is that uh, the Cantalot Boutique just opened and we haven't seen it since Rarity Investigates. Rarity may just forget about it and move on to yet another boutique in Las Pegasus or something. We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, um, that's our quote-unquote review for this episode. I, I think we're losing our stride. We, we need to get back on track. Well, we've been away for a while, but this is also a very non-linear story, so it's kind of hard to do a group review. True. Yeah. Uh, but I think we're better than that. We're better than that. So anyway, uh, next week, what are we going to do next week? Uh, next week, we are going to review the My Little Pony Friends Forever comic issue 27 featuring Pinkie Pie and Granny Smith. That's uh, a <laughs> that's combination that seems strange. The match made Does in Granny Japan? get to hit Pinkie with a stick? Give her time. But anyway, uh, that will be next week's episode review. And well, I think we'll wrap it up here. So I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been sweeping with my ponies. I've been Sapphire Heart, so I'm about to sweep, sweep, sweep Silver's brain out of the room. Oh no, violence, no. But anyway, we'll catch you guys next week. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. Sweep, 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 sweep. No, don't you even. <laughs> I gotta get a little bit more of a, of a beat to it. Sweep, 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 sweep. Don't even. Sweep. sweep. Sweet. No, sweet. stop, sweet. stop, sweet. stop, sweet. stop, sweet. stop, stop. <laughs>